Good evening. Uh, what's going on there, guys? It is the Earth Master here on the live stream with an update uh, video on this Tuesday evening. It is October 26, 2021, about 6.28 p.m. California time. And the latest quake on the globe is going to be a 2.5 earthquake out here on the big island of Hawaii, out there in the Pacific Ocean. This earthquake at 32 kilometers below the surface for that earthquake right there on the big island. Looking at the latest map here in the Southern California range shows a uh, kind of an increase in uptick in earthquake activity in the, uh, well, of course, the 2.5 and above threshold. Pretty much Southern California. Kind of stretching up here towards the geyser area where we've seen an increase in uh, some movement as well. You can see uh, quite a bit of earthquakes here when we add the all magnitudes map in the geyser area of course this is all typical sometimes they uh, see some uh, uh, some larger earthquakes you know above the 2.5 threshold uh, we did see some uh, further movement south of here around the Santa Rosa area with a 2.0 and also some further increase in movement along the Antelope Valley area Long Valley Super Volcano and the Ridgecrest area this movement down here kind of scattered but it is kind of on a broad region stretching to the west and east of the main area where we've seen uh of course that line of activity from the earthquakes uh, a couple years ago in this region over here around the asphalt system we're seeing a little, a little bit of movement as well with a 2.7 this one pretty shallow 1.6 kilometers for that uh, uh movement over here around the asphalt system also over here in the western part of this little area a couple small microquakes the Coso or the uh, volcanic field up here, volcanic range, Coso range, diminishing activity, just a little 0.7 earthquake. A little, little bit of uh, movement there, but uh, nothing like we had seen uh, within the past week. Garlock fault structure, pretty quiet. Not seeing a whole lot of movement on that over the last 24. Still uh, some activity over here north of the, uh, let's see where we're at here. Uh, the Cambria section this year seen that 4. Point, let's see what was a 4.7 that's right 4.7 in this area yesterday and of course a little bit a little bit of microquake activity kicking up um, over the last 24 hours within that vicinity of the 4.7 that struck yesterday looks like a pair of twos and a little bit smaller earthquake in that region nothing more significant taking place yet kind of just uh kind of just a few aftershocks in that area we are seeing a little swarm of movement right around the san andreas fault system the southern end uh, on the like i said the southern end of this near highland redlands area a couple of these earthquakes are right smack dab on the san andreas fault including this 1.3 but within the vicinity of it we've seen uh, quite a quite a bit of movement uptick uh, over the last 24 hours to including a 2.5 this one pretty deep at 20 kilometers about uh, maybe about a mile or so from the San Andreas fault system the southern end but uh, that's that's this activity over here on the western part of it over here on the eastern part of the plate boundary a little bit of increase in activity as well indicating uh, further pressure along this section of the San Andreas Fault over here near Indio. We've seen a, a 2.4 and also up here north of Desert Hot Springs near Big Bear Lake in the mountains up here. Uh, a pair of uh, some, some microquakes taking place all on the eastern side of the San Andreas Fault. No swarming to report down here around the Salton Sea. It looks pretty quiet for the most part right now. Uh, San Jacinto Fault area. This is kind of odd here. This is the all magnitudes, but look at this along the San um, San Jacinto Fault area. This is pretty quiet. This is very odd. Normally we see quite a bit of movement up and down this San Jacinto Fault area. Uh, even even though it's just microquakes, we still see a lot of activity today. Aside from this swarming over here around the San, San Andreas Fault system. This this fault system has gone pretty darn quiet. Within the last hour, there is just a 0.6 near the Anza area. 
But uh, man, it's it's eerily quiet within this fault system. It's just kind of odd, folks. So kind of watching Southern California specifically. Uh, over the last week, we have seen some movement uh, taking place. Of course, this is the all magnitudes over the last week. Quite a bit of movement. You can see that movement along the San Jacinto Fault area. Um, and uh, just like I said, 24 hours on that fault system shows just very minimal. Kind of odd, folks. Let's see what else we got here. Nevada rocking and rolling out there around the Tonopah area into the Pacific Northwest. Relatively quiet once again. Except for this little 2.0 near uh, Home, Washington. Never heard of it. 49 kilometers. I'm betting that's a, a subduction zone quake. Trimmer activity. We'll check that here in just a second. We are seeing a trail of activity through Montana, stretching down through the Yellowstone area of Wyoming. Also some activity into Utah once again. A return of earthquakes out here in the Texas area near Midland and also Pecos, Texas. Getting in on some threes, including a 3.6 near Odessa, Odessa Texas. 8.4 kilometers. Midland area. All showing some movement out here in the beautiful state of Texas. One little quake out here on the New Madrid area, 2.8. Um, I'm guessing that's pronounced Steel, Missouri. Right smack dab in this hazard zone called the New Madrid area. Looking at this hazard map here, you can see the uh, the main area of the fault system of the New Madrid area. That's where that 2.8 struck today. Other than that, we're not seeing any further movement, but uh, still, just it's still alive. That fault system is no doubt still alive. Puerto Rico, some activity around the uh, main area of Puerto Rico, also up here towards the trench, a 34 kilometer deep, 3.6 in the region of the Puerto Rico area. Alaska, all typical earthquake movement up here, including uh, just a lot of microquakes up there through uh, Anchorage, stretching towards the Aleutian. Islands, or Aleutian, Alu, the Aleutian Trench. Also Hawaii, getting in on some activity, including that uh, earthquake that we've seen on the globe. We are seeing a little increase in movement offshore. The typical area that we watch down here on the southeast, flank, or the southeast region of the Big Island is this area right here. But over the last 24, we're looking at some migration offshore. And uh, some of it's pretty deep, folks. 46 kilometers for some of these earthquakes. Uh, it's a little bit deeper than uh, what we normally see for this region. So something brewing, something moving underneath here. Got to keep an eye on this activity. And the Lohi Seamount offshore volcano, underwater volcano there as well. Kind of keep an eye on around the Mauna Loa area. Three, uh, looks like three earthquakes or so stretching through the uh, Mauna Loa area. 2.6 and a couple other smaller quakes around that uh, region of Hawaii. Pacific Ring of Fire, looking at some deep earthquake movement in this area, 4.2, 488 kilometers for that uh, super, it's a super deep 4.2. It's a really deep earthquake. And up here, off the coast of Tokyo, into to the Japan Trench, some further uh, forests, it looks like, in the region of uh, the Japan Trench. Down south here through the Solomon Islands, Samoa, Fiji, and Vanuatu area. Pretty quiet, except for this little uh, earthquake right smack dab on the Kermadec Trench. Down into the subduction zone, 58 kilometers for a 4.9. Also looking at this activity just off the coast of New Zealand, a 4.3. Striking in that area, somewhat shallow, 10 kilometers for that earthquake. A little bit of movement through the Indonesia area, also stretching up into... Uh, portions of China. Mediterranean Sea westward, pretty quiet. We did see some uh, further movement around the South Sandwich area. Of course, that 5.9 striking last night. Since then, we did see a little bit further pressure to the west, right around the South Sandwich Trench. 5.0 striking into the subduction zone at 45 kilometers into the uh, Sa South Sandwich Islands area. Uh, in the Yellowstone area, we'll go ahead and check out this here real quick on the thumbnails. Looks pretty quiet for the most part. A little bit of quaking, a little bit of small micro quaking around the northwest corner of the park, Maple Creek area. 
but uh, pretty uh, pretty calm, folks. There's not a whole lot of uh, trim or not trimmer, but uh, this hope there's not any trimmer, any type of volcanic trimmer at the moment here in the Yellowstone area. Looking at the PNSN trimmer map in the Pacific Northwest area shows 335 epicenters of trimmer into the Washington Vancouver area. It's been uh, in this region here for the past few days. So still some movement taking place along the Cascadia, Northern California, Northern California, Oregon area looking pretty quiet. Or as the trimmer activity goes down, dip downstream into the Cascadia subduction zone. The sun is popping up a little bit, coming back to life with some flaring and some sunspots kicking up. Look at that sea flare chance, 70%. We did see some M flares over the last 24 hours, including a 1.3 M flare earlier. Uh, it appears that additional flares above the M1 threshold will be probable during the next 24 hours. Therefore, they're issuing a 25% chance of an M flare, 10% chance of an X flare. So things getting a little spicy on the sun. Some of that activity you can see in the... Um, I'll show you this uh, little map here. These are some pretty big sunspots kind of getting their act together as well. 2886, 2890 uh, looks kind of weak there, but look at this baby right here. 2887 cooking. Definitely uh, looking like the sun's starting to wake up a little bit here and all this activity facing the Earth side. There's those solar flares once again with uh, potential of likely an M flare here uh, pretty soon within the next 24 hours. Uh, as far as geomagnetic activity, looks green at the moment, as far as any uh, solar storming goes with the auroras, but that could always change. We'll keep an eye on that. But, uh, wow, it's nice to see it coming to life, let me tell you. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a beautiful evening out there. And um, just kind of kicking back here in Northern California drying out a little bit after receiving uh, almost six inches of rainfall within the past week most of that occurring a couple nights ago in a 24-hour period got some more rain coming up here uh within the week just some scattered showers no major storms to hit uh, this area of california but uh, we'll take any little any little system we can get we still need to catch up and uh, put a uh, damper on this drought that we're in have a good night, folks. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out.